We're here at AUSA Day 3. I'm Aaron Mehta, Editor-in-Chief of Breaking the Fence. Ashley Roki is our Land Warfare Reporter. We're going to break down some news from today and then kind of wrap up the show here. Ash, let's start talking about what's on the show floor, because uh, there seems to be a thread here with a lot of, let's call them robots, for lack of a better term. <laughs> robots it is. Um, yeah, there's a big push within DOD and the Army. Um, for the Army, it's human-machine integration, and walking around the floor, both floors, there's robots everywhere. Um, there's four companies that were recently picked to proceed with the Army's robotic combat vehicle prototyping competition. These companies have brought their prototypes with them and are showcasing them all week. Industry is also eagerly awaiting the Army to drop a draft solicitation for its SMET um, Increment 2 program. It's not 100% clear what that will look like, but it's sort of the follow-up effort to the contract General Dynamics Land Systems currently has for a small robot that transports uh, military equipment on the battlefield. Um, General Dynamics Land Systems said it's waiting to see what's going to happen um, and what the requirements are before they decide how to proceed. Um, other industry here is touting that they are prepared to get involved in the competition. Including Hanwha, who told our Michael Mero that uh, they're looking at this thing. They haven't made full decisions yet, but they're certainly interested in it. Yep, and they sort of noted that they're looking um, to potentially partner with another company, but they would, didn't name who that was. And Hanwha was a good segue into the international market scattered throughout the floor. I know you've been sort of following this on and off all week. Yeah, there's always a big international presence at AUSA, but it certainly seems like it's, uh, if nothing else, maybe a little bit louder this year. Um, Tim Martin, who's our European Bureau Chief, has been in town. He's talked to a couple of different folks. Uh, he had an exclusive interview with the Norwegian Army Chief mm -hmm. yesterday, uh, where the Army Chief revealed that Norway's going to actually, uh, it had planned to buy 58 plus an option for 18 more Leopard 2 tanks. Uh, that option is not going to be picked up, he told Tim. Uh, he said it's just going to be the 58 tanks that they're going to buy. Instead, he wants to put that money towards air defense and long range fires. It's kind of a reflection in a lot of ways of how the uh, situation in Ukraine has changed, and that's kind of more of a focus now than tanks were at the start of the year. Um, another thing is Tim talked with uh, the CEO of NAMO, which is a major European munitions company. Uh, he had a, a, quite the line where he said that if there's not longer term contracts handed out by governments, the munitions industry is going to break its neck trying to get around how to produce this stuff and meet the requirements. Uh, obviously, all those stories are online. Uh, again, big international presence here in AUSA. All right, let's try to wrap up uh, the three-day show. Um, give us a theme, Ash. There was no big unveilings this year, big takeaways or announcements um, from the Army. They sort of talked about the recruiting problem in the week leading up to the show mm -hmm. and what they were going to do. Um, but sort of leading up to this, there was the threat of a government shutdown. We didn't know if the Army would actually show up, right. if it would just be industry. But everybody is here and pulled it off of uh, massive attendance. Um, but a lot of uncertainty. That seems to be sort of a theme throughout all the speakers. Um, Congress right now in the House, they do not have a speaker. That's right. Um, so to pass more m funding for Ukraine, not clear how that's going to shake out. And then given what has happened in the Middle East um, with Israel this week, that has been a big talking point as well. Yeah, I think that's accurate. And you can see that reflected in the conversations we've all had throughout the show is everyone kind of says it just feels a little uncertain. That's the word you use. I think that's the correct yeah. word about what's going to happen with Congress, with the budget. Obviously, all the modernization the Army's talking about, if there's no budget in the middle of November, that's going to come to a halt, and that has follow-on effects, as we've heard from leadership here as well. Definitely. So, in recent years, the Army has held off any big contract awards in the first quarter of the fiscal year, mm -hmm. which kicked off in October 1st. Yep. Um, so, there's not a big impact right now, but without a budget, they can't do new starts, so they're just right. waiting to see what's going to happen at this point. Yeah, so impacts that could come down the road, and a lot of what we've heard about is stuff that needs to get going. Yeah. Okay, well, look, that's the end of AUSA. Uh, we appreciate everyone who's talked to us over the last couple of days, helped us with stories, just stopped by to say hello. Um, we really do appreciate you watching as well over the last couple of days. Please stay on the site, breakingdefense.com. We're going to have a couple more stories going up over the next few days. Thanks for watching.